smells. Like, I can't even explain it. It, it doesn't smell. It smells like smoked, I guess, kind of like a smoked animal, but it also, I guess it smells smoked and it smells like there's no air. Um, it smells like airless. I don't know. And things, you know, half the apartment was completely lost and then the other half of the apartment was just really badly smoke damaged. So the things that were in the smoke damaged part of the apartment we still had, and the smell was in them, and we, you know, you just can't get it out. You can always smell the smell. Um, but my entire room was pretty much gone. Memoir of the life and public service of Sir Stamford Raffles by his widow. Lady Sophia Hall Raffles. The loss I have to regret, beyond all, is my papers and drawings, Sophia. all my notes and observations, with memoirs and collections. I have a very good friend named Sophia. And ample history, not only of Sumatra, so I think but of Borneo, and almost her another island of note in these seas. And I think of when we first met, we used to exchange notes in this little box in school, in middle school. And then in high school, we had these books that we bought, these old books that we then collaged into and wrote on. And then we had these boxes that we would make together, little boxes, and then we would hide them in different places in, in the city. And so there's this map that we have of all these little hidden boxes. I will merely notice that there was scarce an unknown animal, bird, beast, or fish, or an interesting plant, which we had not on board, a living taper, a new species of tiger, splendid pheasants, domesticated for the voyage. We were in short, in this respect, a perfect Noah's Ark. All, all has perished, but, thank God, our lives have been spared, and we do not repine. As an example of the character and feeling of the people, the following anecdote may be interesting. Whilst the editor was almost overwhelmed with grief for the loss of his favorite child, unable to bear the sight of her other children, unable to bear even the light of day, she was addressed by a poor, ignorant, uninstructed native woman of the lowest class, who had been employed about the nursery, in terms of reproach not to be forgotten. They had me write in, a dar in the dark with a flashlight, so that so I would take a flashlight and trace out a letter, and then it kind of holds in the sky. You know, when you, you draw something with light, the light remains. So you have this light that stays in the, in the air for a second, and supposedly it's going to help you visualize. You know, they also have you like make letters out of clay. So it's about like physicalizing these shapes, so they're not just shapes because a dyslexic actually the shapes are always moving around and turning so it's trying to like hold it down I think I am come because you have been here many days shut up in a dark room and no one dares to come near you are you ashamed to grieve in this manner when you ought to be thanking God for having given you the most beautiful child that ever was seen were you not the envy of everybody? Did anyone ever see him, or speak of him, without admiring him? And instead of letting this child continue in this world till he should be worn out with trouble and sorrow, has not God taken him to heaven in all his beauty? What would you have more? For shame, leave off weeping, and let me open a window. I was outside, all of a sudden, um, and there's a bench. And there was a man who was really, he was blonde and kind of heavy in the face. And he had really, really bright blue eyes, like piercing blue eyes. And I was speaking to him, and he'd just come from a trip. So 
somewhere overseas, I don't know where. And he's talking, and then basically showed me all these drugs that he was smuggling in. And then he was talking about this drug, which I don't remember the name of, and it's not, it wasn't a real drug. And I was saying, I don't know, I've never heard of that. What does it do? And he told me that it makes you feel like your feet are paws. When the people of the Tiger Blas country first beheld the editor, they seemed to be struck with amazement, and the question was not, who is that? But, what is that? The disguise of dress, and, to them, the extraordinary appearance of fairness were unaccountable. With all the wonder of ignorance they immediately conceived that there must be something supernatural, and mothers pressed in crowds, imploring to have their children touched as a preservative from all future evil. It was in vain to urge fatigue, to entreat to be excused. No one liked to lose so easy an opportunity of ensuring future good, and the noise, the pressure, and confusion were not a little amusing. When one crowd was satisfied, a fresh collected, and it would be difficult to guess the number on whom was bestowed this slight but coveted act of kindness. It is the universal and standing law of the bat as that death by eating shall be inflicted in the following cases. First, for adultery. Second, for midnight robbery. And, third, in wars of importance, that is to say, one district against another, the prisoners are sacrificed. Fourth, for intermarrying in the same tribe, which is forbidden from the circumstance of their having ancestors in common. And, fifth, for treacherous attack on a house, village, or person. In all the above cases it is lawful for the victims to be eaten, and they are eaten alive, that is to say, they are not previously put to death. The victim is tied to a stake, with his arms extended, the party collected in a circle around him and the chief gives the order to commence eating. He is then eaten quietly, and in cold blood, with as much ceremony, and perhaps more, than attends the execution of a capital sentence in Europe. The bones are scattered abroad after the flesh has been eaten, and the head alone preserved. My history teacher in 10th grade high school had done this and told me about it, and I just wanted to do it ever since. And it was really, I mean, to me that is like a very kind of spiritual practice, just to walk for 30 days, even if you're not going to see the apostle that's in the church, you know, it's, to me it was kind of a meditation that I was interested in doing at the time. The men alone are allowed to partake, as the flesh of man is prohibited to women, probably from an apprehension that they might become too fond of it. Adverting to the possible origin or this practice, it was observed that formerly they ate their parents when too old for work. This however, is no longer the case, and thus a step has been gained in civilization. But it was just an interesting process. I think the most interesting part of it might have been never being in one place for more than a night. The longest time I was in any place during the 30 days was the seven hours that I slept. Um, it was more than that, it was like 10 hours, because you usually got to the town at seven, and you had to be out of the albergo at seven or something. You know, the person who owned the albergo would come in at five in the morning and like switch on the lights and just get you like, you gotta go. So it was, it was an interesting experience in, in kind of, and just in commitment, like committing to do this thing. And it was interesting how you also, the people that we met, you know, the, you met, these people that you would lose and then you'd find again along the way. It is only particular animals which are allotted to the reception of the souls of the dead, nor need these, in temper and disposition, bear any resemblance to those of the persons while living whose souls are transfused into them. The tiger is the animal they look upon as the most generally animated by a human soul. This this end, it really felt like an end. You know, you go to this sea town and then you walk to the furthest point of this town and you're sitting, you know, 
on the Atlantic and you burn your clothes and it really feels like you've ended this journey.